to create a 9 millimeter length scleral incision which is parallel to the limbus, approximately 1 millimeter peripheral to it. A standard crescent blade is then used to initiate the scleral corneal tunnel, extending the depth into the deep corneal stromal layers until a 75 to 90 percent depth with a semi-sharp tip is then used to extend the deep corneal pocket centrally along the entire length of the wound, taking care to stay with, the with a physiologic radius of curvature in a semi-sharp anteriorly beveled edge is then introduced into the corneal pocket and utilized to extend the corneal pocket from the central dome to the peripheral limbus in every quadrant. The Terry Trefine is a specialized intrastromal cutting device with a cutting diameter of 7.0, 7.5, 8.0, and now 8.5 millimeter sizes available. The height of the cutting blade is approximately 350 microns in profile. The blade is connected by a shank at the 12 o'clock position to a round knurled handle. The Terry Trefine blade is inserted through the superior limbal scleral incision into the deep corneal lamellar pocket. The softer the eye, the easier the insertion. To elevate the pressure and provide back resistance for cutting of the posterior tissue. The Terry Trefine is then rotated with the knurled handle back and forth along the entire arc length of the incision. Ideally, extra pressure is placed at 6 o'clock to allow perforation into the anterior chamber at this site to allow easier overall scissors excision. Despite the edematous cornea, the outline of the intrastromal posterior tree fine cut can be easily seen. Traditional, highly curved corneal scissors are used to complete the tree fine cut and initiate the scissors excision of the recipient disc. Specialized, highly curved, and low profile intrastromal Cindy scissors are then used to complete the distal portion of the scissors excision of the recipient tissue. With completion of the scissors resection, the recipient disc of tissue is removed from the eye, placed on the corneal surface, and inspected for uniformity of cut and thickness. The view has become after resection of the posterior tissue and how fake emulsification could be completed at this stage of the procedure if necessary. It is very important that all of the helon be absolutely removed from the posterior lamellar surface and from the anterior chamber or the posterior graft will not stick. Myocol is then injected to constrict the pupil. The microscope at the donor table, helon is placed on the endothelium of the donor's corneal scleral cap. The donor tissue is then mounted on the Bosch and Loam artificial anterior chamber it is capped in position and the cap is then locked down to create a tight seal for the artificial anterior chamber. A 9 millimeter diameter recipient barren suction tree fine is then placed on the corneal surface of the donor tissue and suction applied. Trephination is then carried out with between 4 and 6 quarter turns downward from the epithelial surface. The depth is approximately 75% at this point and the crescent blade is then used to perform a sharp dissection to the 80% depth, removing a uniform thickness of anterior donor cap tissue. The posterior donor disc is then mounted endothelial side down onto a helon coated Owsley insertion spatula helon, and can be inspected for uniformity of edge thickness prior to insertion. It's inserted into the anterior chamber, filling the anterior chamber completely. For transfer of the donor tissue, the insertion spatula should be at a 40 to the anterior chamber, place it parallel to the iris, and then bring it up anteriorly to coapt the donor stroma. The spatula is then gently removed from the eye, sliding on a layer of helon. Endothelial contact on the periphery has had minimal impact on the six-month cell counts in our DELEC series. 
With the grafting good position, it is used to nearly completely remove the air because during the time of suturing of the superior wound, the endothelial pump mechanism is working and provides a self-adherent. A collagen shield soaked in levofloxacin and dexamethasone is placed on the corneal surface. The eye is patched, no positioning of the patient is necessary, and the patient is examined the next morning. The patient's comfort level is similar to cataract surgery rather than transplant surgery.